Hello everyone and welcome to episode 6 of Galileo Exploration, a fast progression series where we explore new planetary body every episode. And today we'll continue the exploration of Folia system, where we left off in the last episode. After a somewhat exciting landing on Falia and uh, dealing with the extreme heating that we found there, today we will explore Falia's moon Eta, which is far less dangerous than Falia. And as you know, in the cargo bay we are carrying a Eta London that I've prepared for this mission. Uh, this is a very small lander, actually, that does not have a cockpit and has only one seat in it. And um, the <laughs> I decided that uh, for this mission um, we need to pick the best pilot that we have in the KSC team. And that obviously is our beloved Jebediah Kerman. So uh, Jeb needed to perform a short EVA to board our landing module. And once it was done, we closed the door and detached the lander from the spaceship. As you can see, we still have the heating problem around Falia. So uh, we needed to, you know, get away from the spaceship as quickly as possible and then perform a uh, relatively complicated maneuver actually to get to ETA. Because as you remember, we left our rocket in a very inclined orbit and ETA is actually orbiting Falia in a relatively circular orbit that is not inclined. So to save a little bit of fuel, because we have um, a little bit of excess delta V but not that much, we needed to place our spacecraft in an eccentric orbit to change the inclination with a relatively small delta V expenditure and once it was done, we could proceed with um, finishing our burn to get to ETA. And as you can see, thanks to this maneuver, we were able to flatten our orbit uh, with just a couple of dozens of uh, meters per second spent. And then we were ready to perform a uh, short uh, push to get our trajectory to actually intercept with um, ETA. And uh, yes, getting to ETA from a um, low orbit around Falia requires um, around 300 meters per second of delta V. And uh, we have enough Delta V in the spacecraft to actually get to ETA, land on its surface, then get back into orbit and back into circular orbit around Falia and uh, probably rendezvous with, uh, with our rocket if everything goes right. So um, yes, after arriving close to ETA, we needed to perform obviously an injection burn that was also very small. As you can see, ETA is a very small body with a very small gravity as well. And this gravity on the surface of ETA is only 0.05 G so not huge and once we finished circularizing our orbit i uh, tried to pick a right landing spot for uh, for us and since um unfortunately our scanning satellite was still mapping uh, the surface of falia we had no information about the biome distribution on eta but as you can see the surface is actually pretty interesting so i was thinking that um we might pick a spot that uh, just looks interesting and uh, there is a mountain range uh, actually, there are multiple ridges on the surface of ETA, but there is one in particular that uh, draw my attention. And I decided that we will land there, because I was thinking that looks like an interesting location. And yeah, this uh, this spacecraft, if you haven't noticed, has uh, four uh, ant engines <laughs> as its main propulsion system. And actually quite a lot of uh, monopropellant as well, and um, uh, RCS system, so uh, it's basically propulsion system can double as ant engine and monopolant with ant engines being a little bit more efficient than the, the RCS thrusters but uh, the main problem with those as I haven't entirely thought that through I must say is that <laughs> actually it's pretty difficult to control this vessel um, <laughs> with those ant engines because uh, the, the, the only control points that you have is the docking ports and the, the seat and the engines are pointing away from the docking port so so you actually have to orient your spacecraft in the, the exactly opposite way where you want to go. But, but uh, you know, that was just a minor issue. And yeah, we've landed on the surface of Vita. As you can see, it's very pretty here. Um, maybe a little bit pink, but uh, apart from that, the terrain is very varied. And um, because of that, there are plenty of wonderful landscapes that you can admire. But I'm getting sentimental. It's time to do the surface business that we normally do on the surface of other planets. And... <laughs> Yeah, the funny part was that uh, I was so happy about the very nice touchdown and then when I opened the service bay, our spacecraft started to almost got, uh, well, got airborne and almost uh, back into space and I actually had to repeat the stake twice because the first time it was just basically flying all over the place and then Jeb, when, it, when the, he decided to get out, uh, also encountered some problems actually, even more so later on as you're about to see. But uh, yeah, now it's the favorite part of any space mission, especially in the Kerbal Space Program, which is planting a flag on the surface of a different body. And uh, here we are. 
uh, landed on the surface of Eta, which looks really nice, as you can see. It, it would be a very nice place to build a surface base or, um, you know, an outpost where you could actually refuel. Very interesting place anyway, and uh, I thought that we might explore it a little bit more, but first we needed to take all the science data from this particular location. But as you might have noticed, we have no cockpit in this spacecraft, and uh, we've already, um, well, I've already taken some readings from uh, the orbit around ETA. So Jeb first needed to empty all of the science instruments and, I don't know, store the readings in his pockets probably, then man the spaceship again, take all the readings and then go out and uh, that part when he actually uh, left the spacecraft was so hilarious that he was actually ejected outside and started tumbling all over the place and uh, yeah he was a, he was a slacker at that point and I had to wait for like 30 seconds and <laughs> he stops, stopped rolling and fooling about but when he finally stopped that was the time where we decided to actually fly over to the mountaintop that was nearby um, Partly because I was hoping that it might be yet another biome, but mainly to actually have a better look at the surrounding area. And as you can see, the mountain peak wasn't very far away and we got there no problem, actually. And uh, yeah, once we were there, uh, it turned out that uh, it's still unfortunately the same biome, but at least the view was, um, was pretty nice and uh, we could admire the, the view of Eta from the probably the the highest or maybe not if not the highest exceptionally high peak but yeah i'm getting sentimental again <laughs> and i think it's a high time that we actually went back to our spacecraft that was um just a couple kilometers away from uh, from us and yeah once uh, once we got uh, uh basically what we needed to do is board it and then <laughs> and then take off and uh, i couldn't actually grasped the control initially as you can see but uh, then I, I figured it out again and, uh, <laughs> and we were ready to get back into orbit <laughs> just to admire a little bit more uh, the uh, very rugged terrain of Eta I decided that we'll do some low flybys over the um, the ridges that we had uh, nearby and um, yeah once it was over we could enjoy the failure rise as well and uh, got into orbit of eta and as you can see the orbital uh, velocity around eta is only 170 meters per second so very small indeed uh, comparable to minmus in fact and um, now the only thing left to do was to get back into orbit of um, Falia and the rendezvous with uh, our rocket but the problem is is that um, our rocket is actually in a very inclined orbit around Falia so we needed to perform a burn that would place us in a inclined transfer orbit as well so we could actually rendezvous with our rocket with a relatively little or uh, with a relatively small delta v expenditure that was done that was um that wasn't very difficult to do but uh, and and we've done it eventually but um since um due to some let's call it uh, suboptimal uh, burns that i've performed um we were running a little bit short on fuel we still had enough to actually rendezvous with the rocket using our lander but um since i didn't want to take any chances i decided that uh, we will catch up the last 50 meters per second uh, using our um, the main spaceship not the lander and uh, you know, once it was done, the only thing that we had to do it was a particularly easy docking uh, that had to be performed to dock the lander back into the cargo bay. And uh, the last thing of that mission, of that operation, was to transfer Jab back into our rocket. And there you have it, the, the operation Don't Burn on the Surface of Falia is completed and uh, we've explored both Falia and its moon Eta. We've discovered the only anomaly on the surface of Falia, as you're about to find out. And uh, now we are ready to go back to Gale. We needed to wait around 100 days for uh, the transfer window back to Gale to occur, but there were benefits to that, as you're about to find out. And um, while we were waiting, our scanning satellite actually finished scanning the surface of Falia, and now we have complete information about the biome distribution, the uh, altimetry and uh, the radar scanning of the surface of Falia. And as you can see, the anomaly that we've discovered in the last episode is actually the only anomaly on the surface of Falia. I will also upload this map uh, in the description, so if you're interested you can download it and have a look uh, yourself. But uh, now we are at the point where we can actually start our transfer burn back to Gale. And this burn is in fact massive. We need to perform a whopping 2300 meters per second burn to get back to Gale. And uh, luckily we have more than enough Delta V left in our spacecraft after I get rid of uh, some excess oxidizer. And yeah, now our crew is homebound. And we also needed to... Uh, perform a very small correction burn along the way to 
place our periapsis closer to Gale to actually, you know, ensure that <laughs> we won't just fly by it and uh, never get back. And yeah, I think that was a relatively successful mission, although we still need to face the re-entry. Uh, that might be a little bit uh, dangerous, and as you're about to find out, it actually was uh, quite catastrophic. Um, yeah, but I'm getting ahead of myself, huh? you're about to see. Actually, the, um, the main problem or the main worry that they had is that um, those uh, nuclear engines and, their, and, and the engine nacelles are actually peaking um, outside of the heat shield. So I was actually quite sure that the capsule and uh, the parachutes will survive the re-entry, but I wasn't so sure about the engines. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, since you, when you are always coming from um, the planet that uh, is quite far away as Falia, the uh, re-entry velocity is also very high, and, and this time it was no different. And uh, we are actually re-entering at the uh, <laughs> a velocity of uh, over 3.8 kilometers per second, that's exceptionally uh, fast. And uh, initially it was all okay, although I could see that the um, nose cones were heating up and then the problem started <laughs> almost immediately. Uh, first uh, that the nose cones exploded and then um, everything else started to explode and, <laughs> and when I was almost sure that the last engine will make it, it too exploded and detached from our spacecraft. So yeah, we've lost um, all the engines and uh, <laughs> even one, one wing, but the biggest problem was that uh, Although we were captured in a um, stable orbit around Gale, we've lost all solar panels and therefore we are out of um, means to generate electric charge. So I had to disable SAS to save electricity. And our second re-entry was um, a little bit less exciting in terms of heating, but it was actually uh, probably a little bit more difficult for our crew to handle because um, the spacecraft was spinning like crazy. But nevertheless, we um, this time we, we actually came down to land and the parachutes deployed as they should. And um, yeah, well, we slowed down to just over five meters per second with all the parachutes deployed and that was very slow, as you know. And uh, that is also slow enough that um, no explosions were um, planned for the rest of this mission. And we indeed landed relatively gently. And even though we landed on a relatively uneven terrain and had no landing legs, the, the rocket tumbled over and still there were no explosions. So, so we could recover it for um, some small monetary gain. And as you can see, we've gained uh, just a very small amount of funds from recovering that rocket because we've landed very far away from KSC. But we actually got quite a lot of science from this entire mission, over 3,500 science points, which is pretty nice. And uh, right now we have over 6,000 science points in total. So we can unlock new amazing technologies that will propel our space program even more. And also, since I'm playing with the Final Frontier mod install, which is just a, you know, just a mod that adds actually badges to your Kerbals for the achievements that they do uh, when, they are, when they are on the missions, um, some of our Kerbals got a lot of very cool flags. Uh, well, apart from poor uh, Bill, <laughs> he got only one because he's the, the most underrated engineer in the entire KC. So in the next mission, we can either go to Icarus, which is the closest planet around Ciro, or we could go to Telumo, which is uh, basically a super Earth type of or a super Gale type of planet. It's actually up to you to decide. So thank you very much for watching, I hope that you've enjoyed and if you enjoyed please consider liking this video, if you're new to my channel please consider subscribing. I would like to thank Shirax and all my other patrons on Patreon, your continuous support means very much to me. So thank you very much for watching, my name is Mark Frim and I will see you next time.